year-round sporting events. They're located in Hooksit and Goffstown, New Hampshire. Check them out at www.autofairsportstone.com. Be sure to mention the Pirates when you book your first event, a professional environment with a family-friendly appeal. So only seven points in the first quarter. If you took the over at 98 and a half, you're a little bit worried right now. This is true. You see Bones Bagante out there. Maybe he can uh, dial up some offensive plays. You know, Bones was a big-time receiver with the Pirates in their first year as he uh, actually had six receiving touchdowns against the Maine Mammoths. And that six in a game was only equaled by six rushing touchdowns by Jimmy Robinson in the game last year. So here we go. Starting the second quarter, it is first and 10 at the 22-yard line. And they'll be able to run this one out to midfield. So fun watching him run because he'll bounce off a tackle. You think he's a goner in the backfield, but then he has the agility as we see coming up here. Watch the bounce right here. Bang off an opponent and then still gaining three or four extra yards into a pile of Jacksonville shark tackles. That's an aggressive run. Absolutely. 25 yard line call it second and seven for Benefield and company. Two step drop Benefield clutches once now throws down toward the end zone but over through Isaac Zico incomplete and actually Caleb Ham was defending on the play and got behind him. If that ball's on target it would have been six. Yeah and that's been the tone set early by the passing game of the Pirates over the head of Zico. Good coverage by Ham, who's a rangy 6'1", 192 pound defensive back from Fordham. But a frustrated Isaac Zico in the first quarter plus for the Pirates. Need to get him on track. Well, Jimmy Robinson had three carries for 18 yards in that first quarter. See if they can get some more out of him. Still a filling out process on both sides. Chess match between Rod Miller and the Sharks defense. Third and seven. And now the toss incomplete. Give credit well, the receivers to the having troubles tonight. Yeah, give, give credit to the wall for the tackle. Dallas Daniels ran into the wall on the far side and that's what flummoxed him as he couldn't bring it down. So that's another drop four on the night. Daniels his first Daniels has excelled at who excelled at Jackson State playing for Deion Sanders. So it turns into a third and 18. Benefield is going to air it out to the end zone. Caught for a touchdown, Isaac Zico. And the Pirates are a point away from tied at the ball game for Zico, his third touchdown catch of the season. What a throw and an equally outstanding catch by Isaac Zico. There's your best receiver in the IFL right there is a beautiful throw by Benefield could not have asked for a better one dropping out of the sky 35 yard touchdown connection but a route that was perfect by Zico running to the spot of the ball. Here is Josh Gable on for the extra point. Placement down. Kick on the way by Gable, and this one is good. We are tied up with 11.50 to play in our first half. The Pirates 7, the Sharks 7. We'll come back with more in a moment.
Welcome back. Let's go downstairs to Sophia Sargent with Isaac Zico. All righty, Zico. Congratulations on that play and that touchdown. Walk me through what happened. Uh, well, they tried to go man, and then they tried to cover backside. I saw it, so I just went over the top, man. I scored, so I'm just happy to score the first one at the Suns. Incredible. Now, they did score first, uh, the Sharks, but, you know, you, you were able to come up. How does it feel, you know, now that you're, you're, you're scoring? It feels good. We got to get in a better rhythm. You know, I had one where I tried to come back to the ball, and DB was on my back. He, he, he knocked it down, so I just got to be better, come back to the ball more. I understand. How's the morale of the team right now? It's pretty good. I love it. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much, Zico. Back to you up there. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Sophia. 7-7, 11.50 on the clock. Benefield just airing it out. Yeah, that's a beautiful throw. And Zico, as he said, running under it, making his job easy, catching a terrific throw from Alejandro Benefield. But, again, you have to be an experienced receiver to run a route like that and know when the ball's coming down. So we are set for the kick, and here it is as it will come down at the four-yard line. And here is Terry. Terry tripped up across the 10 up to about the 12. And Matt Elam on the stop. Special teamer, defensive back. Jack of all trades for the Pirates. And another form tackle by Elam. I think he gets out of bed and he makes a tackle. Tell you what, he's made all the hits tonight. So it's first and 10 with the football spotted. And they're going to put it up all the way to the 13-yard line. First and 10 at the 13. Connor Blount. We'll have Logan Wright to his right. McLean comes in motion, far side. Here comes the rush, and they'll throw underneath. This is intended for Brian Smith Jr. It's incomplete. Good rush by the Pirates. It was by Nyamwa, the defensive lineman from Merrimack. And that's right down the road here from the Saga Center, playing in the backyard. And credit that to the pass rush. The incompletion clearly caused by the frenetic pass rush of the Pirates second and 10 from the 13 play action fake four step drop and this is going to be intercepted it's Eugene Ford picking it off at the 20 yard line he's still on his feet because he was not contacted and now he'd be brought down back at about the 18 yard line but for Ford that is his first interception of the season And the first interception at the Saga Center. We saw the touchdown moments ago from Isaac Zico, and now Eugene Four with a pick and a poor throw by Blunt, throwing into heavy coverage, but he was flustered again. The push up front by the three man defensive line of the Pirates, causing this free for all on the far side, and Ford was the beneficiary. You saw Blunt get plastered by Kevin Thurman, the defensive lineman from Arkansas State. Yeah, that may have had a lot to do with it. He saw Thurman bearing down on him and then just kind of threw it into no man's lap. I've heard when quarterbacks have pressure, they tend <laughs> to throw interceptions. It does happen, doesn't it? First and 10, football's going to be spotted at the 19-yard line after the interception by Eugene Ford. Zico and Owens in motion, and the quarterback, Benefield, keeps it himself and gets up to the 21-yard line. Gain of two for Benefield. Well, chance to tell you that Inside Lowell is your local news, information, and all things Mass Pirates. InsideLowell.com. If Lowell's your home, this is your place. Bones Bagante sending in a play here to Alejandro Benefield. We'll see if the Pirates can take a lead here for the first time tonight. Each team with seven points. It was first drive scoring for... The Sharks, the Pirates, scoring on their first possession in the second quarter. And here is Zico trying to reverse field. Look out. He's going to be dropped back at about the 15-yard line. Strung out 
by Harrison Poole, defensive back for the Sharks, and doomed from the start. Not a bad play design, but he ran into where the coverage was. You had three shirts around him, and then he had a reverse field going east west, and that's always dicey for a receiver. Third and 11 at the 17 yard line. Pirates got to get down to the 21 yard line of the Sharks for a first down. Benefield, one step drop, throws underneath, and sitting down right at the 20 for the first down is T.O. Redding. Well, Redding played one game with the Pirates back in 2022, and he had five receptions for 40 yards and a touchdown and a two point conversion last week. Here he gets the first down. It'll be first and 10 right at the 20 yard line. Another dart thrown by Benefield. 747 on the clock here in our first half. Owens and Redding go in motion. Benefield going to take off to the 15. And he's finally upended. Coming up to make the stop was Jordan Cole. That's exactly what you're looking for from Benefield. Three touchdowns last week on the ground. All-time leading rusher in Pirates history. And that's why, because there's just enough skill set to know when to take off. He's not going to panic. He'll scan the field. He'll look over his options. And then he'll take off when he has an alley. And he had a great one for five yards. Second and five coming up, John, at the 15-yard line. Benefield goes wide to the far side. Redding to the near side. Benefield going to hand off to Robinson. And he is upended right away. Was that Ulrich Jones? It yes, was. It was. Six, seven, 300 pounds and a flag down. All right, so we'll hold on as Jeff Knight's going to tell us what transpires. Jeff Dwight Knight is a walking encyclopedia of IFL rules, isn't he? He is. He really knows his stuff. Penalties on the offense. Well, it might be game one for these Saga Center fans, but they're already all over the referees. <laughs> well, that happens. Of it's going to push the Pirates back to the 20-yard line. And that is problematic. Just when you're in Sharks territory, you get the penalty to push you back and nullify a couple fine plays by the offense. So third down and 20. Yeah, lost it down on the play as well. Third and 20 back at the 20-yard line. Benefield with a two-step drop going deep down the middle. Caught by Owens for a touchdown. The all-time leading scorer, Thomas Owens, has his first reception of the season, and it goes for six. And the Pirates have their first lead of the game and their first lead ever in the Saga Center. And Thomas Owens, beneficiary of another outstanding throw by Benefield. Owens open, split the coverage. And Owens running towards the near side boundary was fit to the cause. 13 touchdown catches last year, 22 the year before. That would be his 72nd touchdown all time in a Pirates uniform. I think that's a plethora. It is. Here is Gable's extra point. This is good. We'll take a timeout. 14-7 Pirates with 534 to go in our first half. Stay with us at the Saga Center tonight. Well done. Yeah, I'll, let him, I'll toss her back. No, she thinks we're on now. Uh, hold up. Tell her to hold up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
Yep. All right, let it go. Welcome back. Pirates with a 14-7 lead as they get set to kick off here. Right before the end of the half, a chance to tell you that whether you're dealing with a sports injury, looking to improve your overall health and wellness, the fitness professionals at Evolve Health Chiropractic and Sports Medicine are available six days a week with two convenient locations to serve you better. Visit them online at EvolveHealthChiropractic.com. Schedule your appointment today. Here's the kickoff, and it's just shy of a deuce. Josh Gable was gunning for the two points. This was come out to the 20-yard line. Strategy employed by the Pirates going for the deuce, and Gable's capable of that as Terry was the deep man, and as you see, just shy of the goalpost, but a good effort. So that will bring the ball all the way out. Now, they called fan interference, John. So, okay. So it's a five-yard penalty. So it didn't make it into the stands. Right. It was aided by the fans. So fan interference, it would have been at the five-yard line, but they'll put it with a 10-yard penalty to the and 15. Young fans at the Saga Center will learn what it takes. This is their first game probably watching yep. indoor football. Keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> Just ask Jeffrey Mayer, former <laughs> New York Yankees fan. So the first pass on first down is complete to Brian Smith Jr. Or Bartman for that matter. Oh, yeah, there you go. From the Cubs. All the way up to the 21 yard line. Gain of six. So Smith makes the catch. So second and four actually at the 21 yard line. Connor Blount threw that pick that turned into a turnover and points last time. But here he goes underneath to Marquise McLean, who makes the catch at the 22. And that's good enough for a Sharks first down. McLean has found some seams in the Pirates defense. He's sitting down after about a six yard route. And that gives Blount a nice line of vision to find him because he's 6 3 and placed the ball directly in his hands. And that's a equally good route and equally good throw. Well, the Pirates have scored on their last two possessions. They need to come up with a defensive stop here if they want to keep the lead at 14-7 with four minutes to play in our first half. Blount hands off. It is Logan Wright across the 20. And they'll mark it down at the 19-yard line. Wright is a load, no doubt about it. The second and eight at the 19 coming up. But he's also a prototype in this, not only in all areas of indoor football, a lot of teams love the 230 pound back because he gives their short yardage option. Mm -hmm. And he's tough to bring down at that weight. Yep. Two step drop for Blount. And he steps up and now just wisely throws it away. You know, that's something that I can go back to when Coach.
30 yard pitch and catch. As the Pirates have taken a lead. Here's a look at it. Ran to his spot. Benefield threw it perfectly. Corner pocket for Tio Redding, who beat Jabari Gorman, who's had a nice start to his second half, but not that time. Tio Redding, expert route. Benefield, his third touchdown pass of the night. And each and every one has been thrown to a spot perfectly. So here is the extra point. And a whistle before Josh Gable gets a chance to kick it. The lay of game offense. Now you only have 40 seconds after, let's say, a touchdown to get everything set. And if you can't do that, it'll back you up. So now this try comes from the 15. Ten thirty on the clock in the third quarter. High snap. Degenhardt gets it down. The kick goes right into the oncoming rush of Ulrich Jones and finally picked up by Jeremiah Price. And the score remains 20 to 14. Pirates leading here in the third quarter. Well, Price will give a fan a football, and that was doomed from the start. Poor snap. Tough hold for the backup quarterback, Degenhart. And that made Gable's job difficult. Installation was not what the Pirates were looking for. Good job by Degenhart just to get it down, but that started the late draw for Gable and allowed the defender to come in to block it and give Price a football to give to a fan. So that's something they'll look at during the week and figure out what the breakdown was. And contemplate a six-point lead now the good news is Tia Redding has the touchdown and now the Pirates have some momentum to maybe capitalize on defensively for Redding his second touchdown of the year a chance to tell you that auto fair sports dome facilities have 80,000 environments for year-round events located in the Hooksit and Goffstown New Hampshire check them out at www.autofairsportsdome.com from the two-yard line it is Terry, and to Marion Terry brings it out to about the 13. That's what will be first and 10 for the Jacksonville Sharks as they trail by a score of 20 to 14. Still a very close ball game here in the third quarter. Yeah, it's going to be probably that type of game throughout. What we saw in the first half, if that was any indication, both teams seem to be evenly matched. As Terry is hesitant, he who hesitates usually loses, especially in indoor football. Especially when Calvin Bunge is right there to make a hit. That too. So, from the 13-yard line, three-step drop. Underneath route that is caught by Brian Smith Jr. for a first down right at midfield. First catch of the night for the Missouri Valley wideout, Brian Smith Jr., and Blount, like Benefield, throwing his spots. If the route is effective, the ball is going to be there. And pretty good defense, sticky coverage by Darius Williams, but a good throw by Blount. That sets up first down at midfield. Jacksonville trailing by six. Jason Gibson yells out his play. One step drop. Here comes the rush. Quarterback going to take off and out of bounds. Gain of maybe two on the play for Connor Blount. But that's smart. Take what your defense gives you. Don't force anything. Jason Gibson, you see the man with a headset. And your picture led this team to a championship last year in the NAL. First year in the IFL for them. But Gibson's one of the smartest offensive minds in the league. Well, he's been coaching for a long time. Second down and eight from the 23. Blount, quick drop, complete to Smith. He's found Smith working underneath routes. Durden, uh-oh, look out, helmet off and a little uh, 
extracurricular, but no flag thrown. Yeah, that is uh, James Nehemiah. Yeah, getting a little chippy. Yeah, a little bit. But helmet comes off. He does not have to leave the field like he would in the NFL. No. Or college football, for that matter. On a third and four, upcoming for the Sharks. Got to put it right at the 20-yard line. McLean in motion on the near side, looking his way. Now underneath route, right makes the catch to the 20 and upended. No gain on the play. So Logan Wright makes the catch, but it sets up fourth and still four at the 20-yard line. Elam again, an upending tackle for Matt Elam. Played a nice game tonight. Yes, he has. He's going to be a fan favorite at the Sangha Center. Well, here we go. This would be the big stop for the Pirates in the second half. 7.03 on the clock, third quarter. Pirates up by six. Jacksonville looking at fourth and four on the 20-yard line. McLean and Smith Jr. into motion. And here comes the rush. The quarterback gets away. Blount has the first down and goes out of bounds. It'll be first and goal at the five-yard line. The elusive Connor Blount got by the first line of defense and then smartly just pulled it down. He knew he was going to get hit. Take your first down and take your field position. So he outran the defenders on the flank, and he did not want to get hit by Elam, so he hit the board and say, I'm out of bounds. First and goal, they put him at the six, and all kind of motion, hold on, most likely against the offense. Here's Jeff Knight. Motion. It's the offense. More laundry on the field than your dorm room during uh, your college days. My dorm days. room was actually pretty good. Oh, I doubt that. No, nah, no, nah, we were really good. <laughs> sure you were. Now, look at that. I'm going to say that is Nick Roos, big number 63, the 6'6", 320. Offensive tackle out of Bethune-Cookman, and you can't miss a guy like that. So it'll be first and goal at the 11. Smith and McLean in motion. Here comes the rush, and they sacked him. That is Calvin Bundage getting his first sack of the year for the Pirates. And he can celebrate a delayed blitz dialed up by Rod Miller. Bundage from Oklahoma State. Look at the real estate right up the gut. And Bundage was unblocked. But he came on the delay, and that caused Blount to hesitate as well. So now, after a first and goal at the six, fault start and a sack, second and goal at the 17. Blount with a two step drop underneath at a five yard line that is caught by Smith and he will lose another yard or so. They're going to put him back at about the eight. Yeah, he's still got nine on second and 11. Third catch of the drive for Brian Smith. Maybe they said in the locker room one of our adjustments offensively will be to get Brian Smith involved. Seems like that's the case for Jason Gibson. Third and goal. At the eight yard line. Quick toss, nice slant route, and down to about the two is to Marion Terry. Well, he's got size, but they didn't really go with a jump ball. It was more like a, uh, you know, an inside route on a slant for Terry. That's exactly what it was. Did a good job to hang on. There was some mustard on the throw by Connor Blunt. Not an easy catch, especially with Darius Williams on his back who brought him down. Well, Terry, 10th all-time leading receiver at Florida State and a timeout for the Sharks. We'll take one quickly as well. 2014, 413 on the clock. Sharks trying to punch it in. We'll be back.
Fourth and goal, and Connor Blount rolls. He's sacked back in the 10. The Pirates have held. Swarming defense. It was like an amoeba. Three-man rush headlined by Calvin Bundage, who had quite a drive with a sack moments ago, but also Kevin Thurman and Julius Turner swarming Connor Blunt to bring him down and force the turnover on downs. And those type of plays, and you're headlining it in your, on your score sheet right now, those are the ones you put a star. Game-changing plays, that's one of them by the Pirates defense. Not an easy task, especially in indoor football on fourth and goal. And the fact that you can create a three-man rush, that's a huge part of Rod Miller's game plan. There's a nine-play drive that got it all the way down to the two-yard line, and they can't punch it in. Pirates take over, first and 10, 3.30 on the clock here in the third quarter. Zico comes in motion. There is a flag on the play. Robinson trying to jump outside. He is hit and dropped. Got to credit Caleb Ham on the tackle. And if it's against the Pirates, they may wave this off because it would have been a tackle for a loss. Good point. Yeah, it's on the defense. Beat the first down. A little more breathing room for the Pirates. Illegal defense, five yard penalty. It'll be first and five, and they'll spot it up to the 16 yard line. And now a flag comes out. And Bones Bugante is on the field. Somehow upset with what just occurred. And I think the flag's on him. I think it is too. Conduct. You know, one of the things that happens in a situation like this, sometimes they'll give a warning, but if they think it's egregious enough, you'll lose your on-field coaching privilege. And we'll see if Bagante gets to stay on the field or if he has to get ushered off. As long as he doesn't lose his golf club privileges, we're okay, right? I guess. <laughs> well, he has not left the playing facility, so looks like he's going to be able to continue. Let's see where they step this one back to, the five-yard line. Yeah. That'd be an unsportsmanlike penalty. So my guess is it's still going to be first down and well, they're putting it at the 11. All right. And they have to get to the 21 for a first down. So 10 yards to make the first down after the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. All right. Going to field with a one-step drop. Throws to Robinson, makes the catch, has the first down, and a little more as he gets up to the 24-yard line. What a call by Bones Pagante. Shaking off the unsportsmanlike conduct. Jimmy Robinson open up the far alley. Again, using the board as leverage. Get him the ball. Every Anytime Jimmy Robinson has the ball in his hands, it's a dynamic element. It's true. 4-3 speed in the 40-yard dash. And watch. It's, there's no blockers. No. Nope. And he outruns two. First and 10. Football at the 23. One-step drop. Look in. Owens catch. And he'll be upended at the 20-yard line. Going to give him the 19. He'll be two yards shy of a first down. Owens caught a touchdown in the second quarter. They want to get him more involved, no doubt, as we head towards the final quarter. Pirates all-time leading receiver. 72 touchdowns, you mentioned, in his career. Correct. So, second and two at the 19. Owens will be in motion. Yep. With Zico. 
And they'll hand off straight forward. Robinson, big hole to the 10. Still going down to the nine yard line where it's going to be first and goal. The old zone read. What really made that effective is that you had Zico in one slot, Owens in the other, and it kind of fanned out the defense, and Robinson just picked the hole. Yeah, you got him off kilter. Got him leaning the wrong way. Another good adjustment by Bones Bagante. First time we've seen that play call tonight, but it was effective at the right time. Wide side is the right. All the motion goes that way. Toss, Robinson, and he'll be strung out for no gain. Well, we're down to 48 seconds here in the third quarter. Chance to tell you that Inside Lowell is local news, information, and all things Mass Pirates. InsideLowell.com. If Lowell is your home, this is your place. Conversely, after the last play design, this one went towards the flow of the defensive pressure. So Marcus Bragg, the defensive end, brought down Robinson because he ran into where the defense was going. Second and goal, still at the 10. 18 seconds left in our third quarter. Pirates up by a score of 20 to 14, trying to add to it. And fake, and Benefield will keep it down to the six. Now Ulrich is looking for a flag against the Pirates, but he's not going to get one. I love the sleight of hand by Benefield to end the quarter. Breon Murray saved the touchdown with the tackle of Alejandro Benefield, but the Pirates with a six-point edge as we head towards the final quarter. We'll take a timeout and come back for the fourth quarter in just a moment. with you this evening as the Pirates are on the march. We start the fourth quarter. They have the ball in the red zone. Looking at a third and goal from the six. Trying to add to a 20 to 14 advantage. Pirates are 1 0 on the season. It's first game of the year for Jacksonville. Pirates playing their first ever game here in the Saga Center in Lowell. All time, the Pirates are three and two in home openers. Trying to make it four and two with a victory here tonight. All right, I'm putting you on the spot. Third and six inside the 10. Where are you going? I'm putting the quarterback on a roll. We'll see what's uh, almost like a check with me. The right. wide side is the left. Zico and Redding were in motion on the left. The quarterback fakes the pitch. He's looking. Now throws to Robinson. Caught for the touchdown. Jimmy Robinson. That is his first touchdown reception of the season. Fourth touchdown tonight. And number seven on the year for Benefield. Well, you said go to the wide side of the field. Expert design by Moninghoff and Bones Bagante, their offensive coordinator, Robinson. Had to reach down and make a 
relatively easy catch but still a good throw by Benefield and an explosive for the Pirates they've gained more momentum here as the second half has gone along they pretty much dominated the third quarter overcoming a missed extra point which who knows might rear its ugly head you never know as we still have 14 minutes to play but that's the design play you were looking for yeah the two in motion on the left then cleared it out for Robinson who was all alone and the Pirates will go for a two point conversion they were three of five in two point conversions last week Benefield had one picked off he failed on a running attempt was able to come three complete three other passes for two here we go Pirates looking for a two point conversion and they fake now to throw tipped and incomplete. No, we can't catch it once the fans have touched it. <laughs> so we'll take a timeout. 13 minutes and 53 seconds to play here in our ball game, and the Pirates still lead it by a score of 26 to 14 over Jacksonville. We'll come back to the Saga Center in a moment. to play in the ball game and the last two times the Pirates have had the football they have scored the Redding with a touchdown and now this pass to Jimmy Robinson there's a look at the two-point conversion Tio Redding tipped it uh, and actually brought it down after fan had a hand on it so that's incomplete here's the kick and it'll be taken by Terry two yards deep he is out to the seven and swarmed and going down. Zico helped finish him off. Yeah, not only can Zico do it offensively, but he can do it on special teams. That's the custom in indoor football. You're playing as a jack of all trades. But it was hesitation again by Terry. Took that extra tick in the end zone, brought it out, and then he met Zico and two other defenders for the Pirates. But going back to that two point conversion, the play was stymied by Breon Murray who returned a pick six at the end of the first half Murray his tight coverage on the intended receiver made the play for Jacksonville and he's played well tonight first and ten football at the seven yard line and here comes the quarterback again he will run and there's a flag on the play I believe back in the secondary so Connor Blount Trying to use his legs, jumpstart his offense. Here's Jeff Knight with a call. James Niamwaya is misaligned. Five yard penalty against the Pirates. It'll be first down and five at the 12. Can't be aligned outside the guard. Have to be inside the guard, and there's a good job by our crew to capture Nehemiah and his false alignment. So on first and five, look out! There's another sack for the Pirates, and that's Calvin Bundage. I think that's his third sack tonight. All of them, if I'm not mistaken, on delayed blitzes. 
Fundage. The celebrations continue. Impact performer on defense. Yep, Hesitation he right by there. Blount. Unblocked from the edge. Wow. So that sets up a second down. And about nine. Here comes the rush again. Bundage makes him unload it. It's incomplete. Good pressure by Calvin Bundage. Why not keep dialing it up if it's working? As Blount so is frustrated with the play selection, perhaps, of Jason Gibson. Well, you know, Counterstone Bank sponsors the Pirates. 12 locations across Central Mass. You can trust Cornerstone Bank. They're there when you need them. We'll see if the Pirates defense is there when you need them now on third and nine from the seven yard line. Well, flushed out right now throws has a man wide open caught and falling down. Is Smith if he stays on his feet he has a touchdown. He also had to come back for the ball it was underthrown by Blount and thrown off guard perhaps because he was backpedaling but still you're right if he had let him a little bit more it was an easy six for Brian Smith who's had quite a second half that's his fifth reception of the half so now first and 10 14 yard line and quick look in complete McLean makes the catch at the nine yard line So the drive continues after it looked like the Pirates might get off the field. Second down coming up. No lead is safe in the IFL. That's why you cannot. You can ill afford any letdowns on defense. Second and five at the eight. They got to get it to about the four yard line for a first down here's a toss to the end zone and there was a little contact but no call on Darius Williams and the pass is incomplete intended for Terry how about Darius Williams though he knows where the ball's going he's been doing it throughout the game this is good coaching as well the coach to hit a spot on defense and that's where Williams was ranging towards so now, after the incomplete pass, third and five at the eight-yard line. Pirates tried in the whole length. We're going to get a timeout here. It's going to be Jacksonville taking a timeout. We'll get offside quickly. 9.46 to play. Pirates still leading 24-19 back in a moment. Here we go, third and five at the eight yard line. Play action fake and you have the rush all over Connor Blount. He just threw it away to lift the fourth down. I said you off the air, this is your play of the game on defense. Here comes another one coming up on fourth down, but another delay blitz. Thurman, Kevin Thurman was down rushing. On Blount, take another look. Just a push by Logan Wright, who's been quiet in the second half. They're running back. Didn't stymie Thurman, which is hard to do anyway because he's 298 pounds. But the delay push by Ron Miller has been a huge part of their game going in the second half. Really has. We're looking at fourth and five at the eight yard line. Pirates trying to get off the field with a 26 to 14 advantage. In the fourth quarter, 8.50 to play on the clock. And now, 
We have a timeout, Jacksonville. Let's just keep it here. As we have, theoretically, the big defensive play of the game coming up. A chance to tell you that you think it, Omniprint inks it. Omniprint offers an extensive selection of promotional products. Visit them either at 92 South Broadway in Lawrence, at 27 Apple Street in Bowl, or online at www.omniprint.com. And we'll also tell you that the Old Sun offers free subscription. That's right, all of your sports scores and information without the pop ups. Visit lowellsun.com today. Well, we've seen the Myers make some pretty good defensive plays tonight, John McGrell, and they need to make another one right here. How about Rutledge? Plays that he's made in three seconds in the three men line. Anchored by Thurman. Turner as well off the edge. Well, here we go. Fourth, They've had an answer, Mick. Fourth and five at the eight yard line. Connor Blount wants to throw to the goal line. Did he catch it? The wallop by Durden, causing wow. the wobble by Smith. And now they say he caught the ball. See, I thought he had a catch. One of the officials said no. He was overruled, so it is a first and goal. First and goal at the one. Blount goes under center. Oh, got stuck. Goes right through his legs. It's loose. He picks it up. And He'll be tackled at the three-yard line. Wow. There is a of fly. All right, let's hold on to the fly. You're Jacksonville. You can't afford a bad snap. Here's the call from Jeff Knight. Bad snap. Good job by Blunt just to roll around and carry it. And after the play, the unsportsmanlike against Elon. It'll be first and goal. We'll call it about the one. Wide side is the right. Blount rolls, there was nobody there. Miscommunication. Blount's going to throw it to the corner of the end zone. It's incomplete. He threw it away. And now it looks like. Terry get tangled up with Williams right in front of the bench of the Sharks. But no flat. That's exactly what happened. Could have been a unsportsmanlike foul against Terry easily with his hand on the face mask of Williams. It looked like Blount had a hand off and there was nobody there to hit the uh, delivery. Wants to throw, he's in trouble. Now rolls, throws to the goal line, caught, touchdown. This time, McLean dives and makes flag. the catch. All right, there is a flag. Looks like it's going to be against Turner for a late hit on Blount. Personal foul. Turner, rough at the pass. They're all over. Yep, right below us. So that will go in the bank and get assessed after the Pirates get the ball wherever they do. Then they'll move them back 15 yards on the next possession. But there's the touchdown catch by McLean to make the score 26. And here's the extra point on the way. This one is good. 26-21. And this is where you come back to the missed extra point. We'll take a timeout as the Pirates still lead the ball game with 6.39 to play.
That's a shame. Officials haven't helped the cause tonight either. Well, that's a big answer by Jacksonville. Huge. Huge answer. Now, deuce here means the field goal can tie it up. So do you roll the dice and try for the deuce? I'll bring that up in just a moment. All right, welcome back. There's a look at Jimmy Robinson. Here's the question, John. Do you try for the deuce because it would make it a field goal difference? And the Pirates, if you miss and the ball comes out to the 20-yard line, the Pirates still have that 15-yard penalty. You're not going to give up big field position. I think they're going for the deuce think, right here. I think you're on to something. Put a headset on. Well, you have one on, but you should be down on the sideline. Call him plays. I'm sure Coach Gibson goes for the deuce. This was on the way. It's not going to get there. It's going to be Robinson about six yards deep. He's at the five, and that's going to be all. It wasn't close. No, it was not. If they were going for it, it was looked like one of your tee shots. Wide right. But still poor field position, and the flags have been mounting against the Pirates in the second half as Robinson took it five yards deep in the end zone. So if he brings it out to the five, half the distance, it's going to go back to about the two and a half, right? It's at the three. Three. Okay, yep. there you go. First and ten at the three-yard line. The guy in your picture now, Jake Gadone, number 72 out of Dartmouth. Awesome. Spent a year at UConn. He's done a good job tonight. Center from Westwood, Mass. They have kept Benefield pretty clean. Yeah, they have. They've done a pretty good job in that department. Daniels comes in motion, and it's going to be Benefield losing a yard. Second and 11 back at the two. I don't think you want to play conservative here. I think you still nope. want to put your foot on the pedal, so to speak, and keep pushing the ball downfield. I know they're trying to kill some clock with 540 remaining. Timeouts, you can see by the slashes on your screen below below the teams. Two timeouts remaining. So Benefield is operating from his own end zone. Robinson splits out to the left. Ball right in the middle of the field. Benefield steps up, throws to Robinson, complete, trying to sidestep a tackler, and got up to the 11, and that's all. So it's seven yards for Jimmy Robinson. Wide side of the field, but there's the momentum shift now for Jacksonville. They sense they got a chance here. Get the ball back for their offense. Keep Robinson punched in on the far side boundary. Quickly, we'll tell you that fueled by passion for sports and personal growth, House of Athletes committed to inspiring athletes to break out of their comfort zones and reach new heights in athleticism. Can the Pirates reach new heights here with Jimmy Robinson? They can. He takes the handoff and comes all the way up to the 19-yard line for a Pirates first down. <laughs> so much for keeping Jimmy Robinson hebbed in. Running east-west. Tough guy to figure. Any defense is going to have a lot of headaches dealing with Jimmy Robinson. He paid for it. Hefty hit by Caleb Ham, defensive back from Fordham, but effective run by Robinson to pick up the first down. Robinson has a touchdown reception tonight. First and 10, 19 yard line. We're down to 356 and a clock moving. Zico and Redding go in motion to the far side, and Benefield's going to run it, take some time off the clock, and go up to the 24 yard line. Caleb Ham was on the tackle. That play is advantageous. You get the first down, then you just go maybe a little bit more conservative. Give yourself some breathing room, though, picking up the first down, playing the clock game with 3.33 left. And Bones Bagante on the field to speak with Alejandro Benefield. 
They're going to call it second and five at the 23-yard line. Now you have Dallas Daniels wide on the far side. Redding comes in motion on the near. Robinson flags on the play all over. Robinson is in the secondary all the way to the 14-yard line, but let's just hold on. Although Battlefield says it's against Jacksonville. Shocker, the quarterback would say it's against the defense. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but he did it with confidence. He did. Illegal defense. So Marcus Bragg was standing. You're a, one of the down linemen. you got to be all the way down. Right, he was out of his stance. And the arbiter at Benefield made the right call. As the Pirates have the ball at the 15. So they basically wave off the penalty, take the yardage, and Robinson carries for the first down. First and 10. 15 yard line. Zico in motion. Handoff goes to Robinson. Cuts it back inside. Crosses the 10 down to the 9. That'll be four yards shy of a first down. Six yard chunks for Jimmy Robinson. He just doesn't keep the legs in neutral at all. It keeps no. him churning. It's just a churning machine for Robinson. Just when you think you can arm tackle him, he can't. He gets by that first line of defense and he just keeps it going. He's an impressive back. Power and speed. Yeah. And good hands to boot. What a combo. He will set up to the right of the quarterback. Redding and Zico in motion. They're going to run Robinson again to the five, down to the one. Caleb Ham kept Robinson out of the end zone. What a drive by the Pirates. Put an exclamation point by this one. Well, you got to credit Gadone and... Donaldson and Cooper up front. As Keith Jacks used to say, the big uglies. They're doing it. They are doing it. Pirates can put this game away pretty much right here with 127 on the clock. Looking at first and goal at the one. Stick with number three, don't you? I think so. That would be Jimmy Robinson. You caught a touchdown earlier this half. And we're going to get a timeout taken by Massachusetts. Let's take a quick timeout. Right back in a moment. Pirates looking to score. We're coming back. Hell of a drive. Started back at the three. Yep. 47, 47 yard drive. 47 yards. Looks like it's coming to an end for Oakland. NC State, what a story. Woo. Seven straight wins. Got Mr. ACC talking there. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> But they, they ripped through the ACC tournament. Welcome back. Pirates trying to cap off a 47-yard drive. It is featured Jimmy Robinson. Oh, the snap is low. Cover it up. Robinson has it, and he will be dumped back at the 8-yard line. Wow. You don't want to miss fire in a situation like this with a minute to play. And I think we're going to get the one-minute timeout. We will. Tell you what, we'll keep it right here as disaster almost ensued on that uh, bad snap. Yeah, Jimmy Robinson playing shortstop after the bad snap. So since we have the time, we'll tell you that. Our next upcoming broadcast, brought to you by the Lowell Sun, is live 7 o'clock on Nesson, Friday the 29th, when the Pirates take on Sioux Falls. And Sioux Falls was a winner last night, so uh, that'll be a very important ball game. 
Also, WCAP AM 980, proud to be the exclusive radio partner of the Pirates. Hear all the games home and away on WCAP AM 980 or stream them at 980WCAP.com. Voice of the Valley, the definitive talk, news, weather, traffic, sports, music, and information station in the Merrimack Valley in southern New Hampshire. Alejandro Benefield, man on the spot seconds ago, talking with his center, Jake Guadone, about the low snap at the one-minute warning, second and eight, second and goal at the eight for the Pirates with a five-point lead, but that was dicey. Jimmy Robinson carefully fielded the ground ball, but took the loss. So you and I were talking during the break, an impressive drive, knockout punch drive, for the Pirates potentially as they went 47 yards, but now they backpedal. Well, the one advantage is you took time off the clock. Right. So now there's only a minute left in the game. The Pirates have one timeout left, as does Jacksonville. Here it is. Second and goal. They're going to kneel down and force Jacksonville to take timeout. Smart as well. Play the clock game. That's why Bones Bagante has that experience as their offensive coordinator. Keep the clock running. And so head towards your second win. Third and goal at the 11. 28 seconds left in the ball game. And the ball rolls through, flag on a play. Now, here's the question. Did the defense reach in and hit that ball before the snap? That's what I think happened. Here comes the call from Jeff Knight. Yeah, Ulrich Jones call, call for the offside, tip of the ball. See, he, he kind of reached his hand yeah, and knocked jumpy. it away. Yep. Trying to make it a, trying to force a fumble. Oh, it's probably difficult, too, for Gordon, who had that poor snap. He might be a little jumpy. Jones causing him to jump, probably, but that's a penalty against Ulrich Jones. Clearly a penalty. So third and goal now at the five-yard line. The clock showing. Should be 13 seconds left. Well, they're going to put 13 on the clock. You're absolutely right. Pirates trying to run it out and get out of here with a 26-21 victory. And that's going to do it. They're going to run the clock. 3-2-1. And that is your final. Pirates win it by the score of 26-21 over the Jacksonville Sharks to go 2-0 on the season. And now the Pirates all-time 4-2 in home openers, and they win their first ever game here at the Saga Center. Yeah, historic as the Pirates survive in advance to go to 2-0, and and simple as riding your hot hand. You ride Jimmy Robinson, you ride Alejandro Benefield, who pulls the trigger at quarterback. Your receivers make contributions in the first half with Isaac Zico catching a touchdown, and Thomas Owens catching a score, and then you play great defense. Your defense on a plethora of sacks, you stunted well, you covered well. Matt Elam made a comp contribution, and it was all about the star system for the Pirates excelling. Pirates win it by a score of 26 to 21 over Jacksonville. We'll take a timeout and come back here to the Saga Center in just a moment. Yeah, that's that his last well his last touchdown would have been the um, 26 to 14. It's the completion pass to Robinson. Yeah, it's the it's the very beginning of the fourth quarter. Third and goal to six. Robinson makes the catch. 
You want to go with Benefield as player of the game, four touchdown passes? Sure. All right, so Robinson is going to be the play of the game. It's his touchdown reception. It made it 26 to 14. And then the player of the game is going to be Benefield. And if you want to pull another Benefield touchdown pass, you can. If you want to stay second half, he completed one to Redding on second and 10 at the 25. It would have been in the third quarter. So you tell me which ones you're doing first, and that's what we'll do. Robinson is three. All right, and Redding, and Redding is 11. That's a pass from Benefield, though, and he'll be our player of the game. Do we need to take any more breaks there, Chad? All right. Well, Welcome back to the Saga Center. Alejandro Benefield and Rod Miller shaking hands as the Pirates get out of town with a 26 to 21 victory over the Jacksonville Sharks. They trailed in this ball game 7-0. It was tied 7-7 in the second quarter. We were tied 14 all at halftime, John, but then the Pirates kind of took over in the second half as they pulled away from the Sharks. Yeah, they did, and that's the encouraging sign. They had that closeout ability. They had that knockout punch ability to say, you know what, we're going to close this game out. We're only going to do it with our offense. Oh, by the way, if you had the over-under, the over was 98 and a half. You were slightly <laughs> under, and yes, you'll have were. to contemplate that. But the most important thing for the Pirates is they remained tough to play down the stretch. You saw that last week. They were down 40 to 22. They came back to win the game at Green Bay. A little bit different style this week, but equally effective. And that was anchored by Jimmy Robinson, specifically the catch he made in the fourth quarter to give them a 12-point lead. Well, this is the Wamasset Lanes postgame report. Let's get right to the cross insurance play of the game. And the play of the game has to come in the fourth quarter as the Pirates were looking to extend their lead. And they were able to do this just that as Jimmy Robinson circles out of the backfield and makes a nice catch for six. Yeah. Great touch in the pass by Benefield. Robinson going down low to secure it. He was such a huge bell cow in the second half. You know that Jimmy Robinson's going to gain positive yards. You give him the ball, he'll do it. Kept the legs moving throughout. And he was a huge factor. He will be a huge factor for the Pirates if they are going to have success this year. Yeah, autograph time, no doubt about it. That made the score 26-14, and the Pirates hold on the win by a score of 26-21. And, you know, Eugene Ford had a big interception tonight, but let's go right to our cross insurance, or rather the um, Jean d'Arc Credit Union player of the game. And I think you got to go with the quarterback, Alejandro Benefield, as he uh, threw four touchdown passes tonight, kept the Pirates on schedule, was able to avoid sacks, he gets a touchdown pass here to T.O. Reddick. He was composed, too. Check this out. Rifles the pass. Hits the spot. Redding runs the proper route. Dropped it out of the sky. Can't ask for better than that. Tic-tac-toe. Each and every one of those four touchdowns was perfectly thrown. And Benefield has the field vision to capitalize with. You know, the other thing you could talk about on the defensive side, Calvin Bundage with three sacks tonight. Matt Elam with oh, yeah. a lot of big tackles. So should not be underplayed. The defense absolutely was outstanding. Tell you what, we will step aside for our final break of the evening as the Pirates win this ball game 26 to 21, and we'll come back with some final stats. So stay with us here at the Songa Center tonight. I guess so. Yeah. All right, here, let's get into this. You may be able to, if you go to see the live stats.
and I got it here. So I got. Welcome back here to the Saga Center. Again, the Pirates win it by a score of 26 to 21. A chance to look at some of our final stats. For Jacksonville, the leading rusher was Logan Wright as he had four carries for 26 yards and a touchdown. Their top receiver was McLean. Seven catches for 45 and a touchdown. Now for the Pirates, Jimmy Robinson ran 16 times for 70 yards tonight. And Alejandro Benefield, he chipped in with eight for 18. But take a look at the receiving totals, and it looks like Benefield was able to kind of share the wealth. Yeah, that's what you have to do, and that's going to be a, a formula for them with Redding with three and Robinson with three catches and Thomas Owens and Isaac Zico with two first-half touchdown receptions. They combined for four grabs and 70 yards. So that's pretty much your perfect game plan. I know Rod Miller would prefer more points. And you'll see more points from this team as the offense grows throughout the season. But anytime you walk away with a five-point win over a gritty Jacksonville squad, you're happy about it. And it just magnifies, though, something we talked about before the break, about what their defense did tonight. Silencing Logan Wright. He was not a non-factor in the second half. They didn't go to him at all. Uh, Connor Blunt, the quarterback, was flummoxed uh, due to the pass rush, due to the delays. And the blitz is dialed up by Rod Miller. So that's something that you really have to look at as far as a success point for the Pirates. Four different receivers with the touchdowns tonight. Benefield was 21 of 10, one interception, 141 yards, and the four scores. In turn, Connor Blount was 16 of 26, two interceptions, 138, and one touchdown. Final thoughts tonight, John? I think it's a 2-0 and start and a great start at the Songa Center. Uh, an electrifying atmosphere. I think a lot of fans will be back next Friday night when they play Sioux Falls. I, at least I hope they are. They realize how fun indoor football is and what a good group this is. So I think this is one of those build-around games, Mick. These early season games, you need your launching points, and they've got two launching points now, and that's something that Rod Miller has to be very happy about. All right. Well, once again, your final score tonight, the Pirates over Jacksonville, 26-21 to 21 to go 2-0 on the IFL season, winning last week in their season opener and now the home opener here, first ever game at the Sanka Center. Now for our Bruce director, Chad Fillion and John Mita Perel. Once again, I'm Mick Mottingham. Thanks for joining us this time around with the Pirates winning tonight by a score of 26 to 21. So long, everybody.